uh, on contrary, this was the part of our contribution, how we are trying together with the regional countries, with our neighbors, with our strategic partners to solve those difficult issues that allies and alliance is, uh, uh, is facing today. Uh, I'll touch a little bit slightly different perspective, more Georgian perspective, uh, and I won't go into details of Georgian NATO relations because Despite my fourth year in Brussels, I'm still confusing many abbreviations. I won't go into details of what kind of mechanisms we are having. One, one issue that I want to touch upon is Georgia during the last years has become from a pure, con from a pure recipient of security a net contributor to Euro-Atlantic security. And uh, I think that that has been recognized in uh, just uh, in a last Chicago summit declaration as well. Uh, we have 1,700 Georgian soldiers fighting in Helmand with no national caveats attached. And we made it clear that our soldiers will stay in Afghanistan without any drawdowns before, uh, till 2014. But that's not it. We made it clear that we will be part of NATO's or Na NATO's and other partners training, advising, and assisting mission beyond 2014, and I'm glad that we are there at the same table together with our uh, Azerbaijani partners. Turkey is, of course, a member of the alliance, and we are working on that. We are contributing financially as well. It's a modest contribution, 1.5 million, but it shows our commitment to the future of Afghanistan. What is extremely important from that perspective is, and I think that even this financial contribution our readiness and involvement in early deliberations of post-2014 is important in the sense that Afghanistan itself has an historical trauma of being abandoned a few times. And uh, me as a Georgian ambassador, I'm very glad that I was a part of a decision from our point to make it clear that Afghanistan won't be alone. And uh, allies, alliance, and partners like Georgia and Azerbaijan will help Afghanistan. Uh, to strengthen its uh, statehood. Uh, but again, it's not the only contribution from our perspective that we are making in Euro-Atlantic security. There is another aspect of our contribution which is even more important from my uh, own perspective. This is uh, setting an example of democ democratic transition. And I think that from that perspective, Georgia has gone a long way. I would have, I, I remember my conversations last year and I would have never imagined that today or yesterday I would have talked on cohabitation in Georgian domestic politics. And I think that uh, this very transition, this very democratic transition sets a very important example in the region and beyond. Uh, what happened in 1st of October, and I will very briefly touch upon that, what happened in 1st of October is probably a very trivial story in many European capitals. But I think that this was the first historical milestone in our statehood's development. This was the first time when the ruling party lost the elections. This was the first time when president within the 24 hours, uh, even immediately actually after the releasing of exit poll results, conceded his defeat. This was the first time when ministry by ministry, agencies by agencies, uh, outgoing and previous administration have transferred to the incoming administration. This was the first time in our history that losing party, losing opposition party has not disappeared, has not vanished. I remember in the 90s, we had a round table. When they lost elections, no one was around. We had a citizens union during Shevardnadze. They lost elections and the party uh, was non-existent. But today we have a party in opposition who has an experience of being in government for nine years and is still in opposition. And again, that's an extremely important example, I think, that in the region and beyond. What is one more important element here is that bureaucracy. Uh, I think that in this cohabitational period of time, what Georgian bureaucrats have learned is respecting not personalities but institutions. Because when you are in such a vibrant and difficult political circumstances, only thing that makes your survival possible as a diplomat or public servant is respect to the rule of law and respect to institutions. 
So I think that this is a very much educational process for us. But we have a saying in Georgia, anything that does not kill you makes you stronger. And I'm sure that at the end of this cohabitational period, Georgia as a state will be much stronger than it was at the time when it entered this period. But the word cohabitation, I don't like this word, actually, because I think that it's a coexistence. Uh, cohabitation somehow implies that it will end uh, with the results of the presidential elections. But that's not the case. It will continue, because we will have a very strong opposition party, and we are having a, a new administration that has a very strong popular support. Uh, now, uh, and I think that this is, that's something that again we are considering as our soft power and as our part of, as our role that we will, and we are eager to uh, play as in contributing the uh, Euro-Atlantic security cause. Uh, we, we have talked on conflicts and uh, uh, what we have not mentioned and I want to just mention very briefly are the root causes of this conflict. And the, from our perspective, the root, if we don't analyze root causes, it's almost impossible to, uh, to identify the ways out of this conflict. In our case, the root causes are very simple. This is an acceptance of our sovereignty. This is a notion of spheres of influence. And uh, until this thinking is dominated in our part of the world, I don't see any ways out. But on the other hand, it doesn't mean that we should do nothing. And let me tell you what we are doing in order to solve these problems and to uh, find ways out from our, uh, from our perspective. There are three or four, four tracks. Track number one, this is a non-recognition policy. And in this track, the NATO is very uh, closely involved. Uh, non-recognition policy has become a part of the NATO's policy and our strategic allies policy. And thanks to that, there are just Demise Hugo Chavez, Daniel Ortega, and a few exotic uh, Pacific islands that have recognized uh, those occupied territories and, not, uh, and uh, no one else. Uh, again, this was possible just not because Georgians have an extremely efficient diplomacy or diplomats, no, because it has become a declared policy of NATO and EU. Uh, track number two is uh, our unilateral steps. Whatever happens, uh, and whether there is a deadlock or not, whether we see any light at the end of the tunnel or not, we have to make unilateral steps from our side, and that's our decision. What we have done so far, President in 2010 made the legally binding decision on non-use of force. By the way, the other side of the conflict hasn't reciprocated yet. Uh, the second is uh, we wavered with the regime to all Russian citizens. And just to give you a, a figure, in 2012, we had uh, 215,000 Russian tourists visiting Georgia, which is higher than the number of Russian tourists coming to Georgia in 2003 or before that. Uh, third track is, of course, Geneva. Talks. And again, uh, I myself, and I think that many in the region know very well what does it mean to be left alone at a negotiating table or otherwise with the other side of the conflict. From that perspective, involving international institutions, internationalizing the conflict is key here. And on Geneva side, we are discussing the, again, the non-use of force international security arrangements, and all difficult issues. Whether we have been making any progress, no. But this is a very valuable format where we can work on it. And the fourth one, uh, and probably the most important, this is our engagement policy. Engagement policy from our side means that we are considering people living on the other side of occupation line our, as our citizens. And we feel that we are obliged to take the same care about those people as we are taking care about the, our own people. What we are doing there, there are the three main directions. Those are the directions where people do not take decisions according to their political considerations. First is the trade. And we do our utmost to facilitate the trade, 
from on the both sides or between the both sides of the occupation line. Just to give you an example, and I myself, I was, I was, I'm partly from Suhumi, so I know exactly the mindset of the people who currently live on the other side of the occupation line. When tomato is cheaper in Zugdidi, no one will go to buy tomato in Krasnodar because of a political consideration. People will come to Zugdidi and will buy their tomato because it's cheaper there. And I think that that's one of the instruments that we should use in order to facilitate people-to-people -people contact. Second is the healthcare. No one cares about status, independence, when they are in trouble, when they are facing the, uh, either sicknesses or illnesses. Without publicizing, we have been sending uh, quite a significant amount of medication to the occupied uh, territories through the uh, status neutral uh, liaison uh, office. And we are receiving increasing number of people from the other side of uh, occupation uh, line visiting our medical institutions. Again, you will never see them as the headlines of the Georgian news because we know what kind of risks that might entail. But I think that that's an extremely important step in increasing confidence with, between the communities. And third is the education, which is key. My generation of uh, Georgians had a unique chance of attending a different uh, international scholarship schemes. I was myself the part of the uh, Chivning Scholarship Scheme, one, one, one once a Maski Scholarship Scheme. We want the same for the Abkhaz use as well. In order to be able to speak the same language, not linguistically, but culturally the same language, when time will come and we will be part of the same uh, statehood or, or the same entity. And that's extremely important to facilitate the education of those people, not to leave them just, again, just destined to the other educational institutions. That may, again, that in a, in a certain period of time may create a problem of communication between the youth, which is, which is uh, key uh, here. Uh, so, uh, that's actually all what we have been uh, doing. Uh, uh, again, one thing that I have missed, and of course I wanted to go to this point when I was talking on cohabitation, there is one point, and one very important one Georgian reality, which is we have a very vibrant political life today. There are, you will see many headlines, many heated disputes, but a few weeks ago, we adopted a resolution on foreign policy. In this resolution, there were three main uh, points on which both parties have agreed. Point number one is NATO and EU are and will be Georgia's top foreign and security policy priorities. Point number two, main political priority of the Georgian state is the occupation and, of course, sovereignty and territorial integrity. integrity. And point number three, Georgia will, Georgia will never become a member of any organization that is dominated under the notion of spheres of influence, namely CIS, CSTO, or Customs Union, uh, future Euro-Asian Union. That's the three points. Uh, it shows very clearly for me, and it showed very clearly for me, that Georgia has developed as a electoral, uh, as electoral uh, democracy. Because it does not matter what politicians do think. What matters is what people are supporting. And Georgian people support Georgia's Euro-Atlantic past. Georgia's, Georgian people support where, and very strongly identify where, where Georgia belongs to. That's why any politician that is coming or will be coming to uh, the Georgian political scene will be responding to the will of the Georgian people. Otherwise, under current circumstances, and taking into account the, the nature of these heated disputes that we are witnessing in Georgia, they won't be able to, uh, to reach agreement at any issue, at any issue. But uh, again, the will of the Georgian people and the fact that Georgia has become it and has succeeded in becoming the electoral democracy forced all political sides to reach this agreement. Ve en sonunda uh, yine de 
sizlere teşekkürlerimi sunmak istiyorum. Bu e, benim için Bakü'de ilk kez araştırma e, merkezine, e, Romanya Büyükelçiliğine ve benim çok yakın dostuma e, Hazar İbrahim e, İbrahim'e teşekkürlerimi sunmak istiyorum. Çünkü e, gerçekten benim benim açımdan olağanüstü bir e, gelişmeyi gördüm burada e, ve bunun devamını e, ümit e, ediyorum. Bizim açımızdan en önemlisi Gürcistan, Azerbaycan ve Türkiye kendi seçeneğini yaptı. Bizim stratejik ortaklığımız daimidir ve öyle kalacaktır. Dolayısıyla bizim çıkarlarımız aynıdır. Ve bizim tarihimizden ve geleceğimiz de birbirimize bağlıdır. Dolayısıyla Türkçem biraz artık son zamanlarda fazla konuşmadığım için biraz eskisi gibi konuşamıyorum ama yine de sizlere teşekkürlerimi sunmak istiyorum. Davetiyenizden, davet, davetiyenizden dolayı teşekkür ederim. Sağ olun.